She's just 24 and has split her time between Boston and Bangalore. A chemistry major from UPenn and an investment banker with Merrill Lynch. Shruti Shibulal, daughter of Infosys co-founder and CEO S.D. Shibulal, traded in her American dream for an Indian one. For this young entrepreneur, IT in general and Infosys in particular never caught her fancy. Instead, she decided to bite into hospitality and struck a partnership with one of India's leading chefs, Abhijit Saha. So in April 2008, Shruti dished out her company Avant Card Hospitality and rolled out her first fine dining restaurant, Caper Berry. A 70-seater with a tapas lounge, Caper Berry is Bangalore's new hip destination. In less than a year, it has managed to win over Bangalore's foodies and critics. Shruti, many thanks for joining us. Let me start by asking you, your father along with the other co-founders of Infosys have been regarded as the poster boys for middle class entrepreneurial aspirations in this country. When you were growing up and you know you traveled between the US and India, how did it actually impact you? It allowed me to understand that there is something beyond, you know, working for a large organization, working for, you know, a governmental organization. You can actually start something on your own. You can follow a dream and make something that you believe in come true. Did you always believe that you wanted to be an entrepreneur? You know, I mean, I thought about lots of things. You know, you think about being a doctor, being an astronaut, being everything. Um, but I think at a time when I was actually ready to start my career, I thought, okay, well, I have all these options let me take advantage of it and and emphasis was never an option no emphasis is not a family company yeah. it's not something it is not something that i was ever really seriously interested about going into mm -hmm. so it was never an option personally for me and even otherwise it's not an option so what what you know while you were actually studying in the us and you did your graduation there and then you worked for a bit with merrill lynch why why the decision to actually come back to india and start something on your own i was not comfortable at Merrill Lynch after a while just because I you know I was looking at myself thinking about you know the 20 year plan uh, which is something you know my dad talks about quite a bit five year 10 year 20 year plan so you get the 20 year plan from him is it something like that yeah you, you he's got the plan a plan b plan c five year 10 year 20 oh. year and if it's if it makes sense he says you know do something now if it makes sense to you to do it in the next five years, 10 years, 20 years, if it works in that scheme. Mm. And so when I was at Merrill Lynch, I was thinking about, you know, okay, 10 years, 20 years down the line, where am I going to be? And I, I didn't see it being a great place. And I, I, was, I didn't see myself being happy. And I, I knew there was something, there was a different calling or whatever you call it. Like there was something out there for me that I was meant to do. And so so when, when, when did you finally realize that your calling was actually turning entrepreneur and that too in one of the hardest businesses in <laughs> India, hospitality? It's not an easy business. You've got to deal with every regulatory agency possible. Yeah. Licenser, licenses are a nightmare. What were you thinking? The idea of becoming an entrepreneur was there, but not specifically in hospitality. Hospitality was something where I had thought, okay, you know, some, some way down the line when I'm like 40, 50 years old, I'll start a restaurant. You know, it's something that everyone says yeah. and pretty much no one does because of the headache that it is. Yeah. But um, I came back and I, through common friends, ended up meeting my business partner, Chef Abhijit Saha. And uh, he had this great idea of what is now Caperberry as well as a couple of other projects. And uh, basically his vision and my vision fit together perfectly. Did years. you even have to try and convince your parents or did they sort of buy into it instantly? I don't think they bought into it instantly, but it might have taken some time, but it wasn't like a, it wasn't a tough decision or anything like that. I mean, once I knew, okay, this is something that I'm really interested in, they were on board. They were very supportive. And one thing that's really interesting is that my, my dad, for instance, did not meet my partner for six months after signing on. So funding clearly was not an issue as far as you were concerned, right? I guess not. <laughs> no. You didn't have to worry about that. No, well, the funding comes from both partners, um, and it's a it's it's a partnership in the true sense. Uh, so no, it wasn't an issue. You know, when everybody talks about your net worth and all of that, what does it make you? What does it make you think? Because there's many many zeros that you actually have to deal with. Does that is that even an issue? Do you even think about it? No, I mean it's not something I honestly think about, and I think. The people that I have in my life, yeah. the friends that I've had since, you know, I was a baby, they keep me very grounded and obviously it's a great advantage, opportunity, whatever you want to call it. It's 
a blessing and I'm very grateful for it, but it doesn't define me. So what has been the hardest part of actually getting Capoberry up and running? Because it started in April of 2009 and I believe you worked on it for close to what, about eight months? Eight months to just get the space, which was the hardest thing for us. Um, Bangalore, it, it was just at the time, you know, there were, there were lots of properties, but people didn't want to give them out to restaurants. Yeah. People didn't want to lease it up for the amount of time that we were looking for. They didn't have the power capacity. You know, there's so many little details as far as setting up a kitchen, setting up the, the layout of a restaurant um, that need to fit into whatever piece of property that you get. And to do the, for us, it was just very difficult to come across a suitable property. And we just went through so many ups and downs. And things have happened. Things are moving. Things you, have you've happened. been open now. And now you're looking at actually moving it to another location in Bangalore before you actually move out of Bangalore. True, yes. We are uh, starting another outlet. It will be a completely different concept, actually. Um, but the property that we're planning to do it in is one of the best spaces in the city. So we're very UV excited city. about it. Yes, <laughs> UV City. Um, and one of the nicest properties within UV City as well. Very young, you're 25 and actually having to start. 24, okay, 24 <laughs> sorry, you're even younger, you're 24. So you, what, what has this really been like for you? It's, it's been a lot of fun and it's been honestly just a learning experience. I get to see the business from the top down, which is really interesting because you get to see each aspect. You get to see, um, you know, in a restaurant, you, there's service, there's the kitchen aspect, there's the marketing, PR aspect, there's... Where you do know, you find relations. yourself most comfortable? I, well, I, I don't fit in the kitchen at all, <laughs> zero. Um, I'm not allowed in there. I burnt my fingers the other day while I was in there. Um, service, I enjoy quite a bit. I love interacting with the guests. I really enjoy even the administration aspect of it. Um, the restaurant requires a lot of coordination among each set of people, so kind of facilitating that communication, things like that keep me on my feet, on my toes. So I, I'm sure there's now at least a five or a ten year plan, if not a twenty year plan as far as, <laughs> as, far as hospitality is concerned for you. What do you hope to do with, with this company now going forward? Because of course you're expanding within Bangalore, but yeah. anything else that, that is on the horizon at this point? I already have three verticals. So one is the restaurant business, one is consulting where we do food and beverage consulting for anyone who requests us. We also can handle operations of a specific place where you know there's a kind of a revenue share model, yeah. um, which is something also that we're about to do uh, very soon. Um, and we also do out, outdoor caterings. It's okay. under the name Bespoke Catering. We'll have two outlets in Bangalore. We'll uh -huh. probably be operating a couple of outlets within Bangalore within the year as well. Um, internationally, we would love to expand, but it already be, you're you're looking at international expansion well, you have already. To plan. You have to plan. I get that about you. Yeah. I get that about you. <laughs> so you yeah. So we make the plan. We'll see what happens. That's how how soon do you actually hope to take this global? Um, well, Capeberry as itself, the restaurant that we have now is pretty unique. So this is not a restaurant that we're looking to kind of take internationally. It might happen, but we don't know. Um, but not, not the Indian restaurant going abroad, right? No, no. and even if we do something Indian, yeah. um, it will be very different. Our, our philosophy is that we want to bring something that's not already in the market. I believe in the power of innovation within you know, the restaurant, within culinary science. We do techniques that have never been used in India before. and. But the thing is, it should be quality at the end. So yeah, it won't be the typical Indian Daba style restaurant or anything like that oh. that we're taking abroad. It'll be something really interesting. But what was the response like, you know, from the other Infosys co-founders, people who have sort of seen you as a little girl growing up? What was their response like when they actually walked in here? And I believe a lot of them actually frequent this place uh, they do. quite a bit. They do, yeah. It's, um, they're very happy. And I think everyone's really were proud they surprised? of me and stuff. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, I don't think anyone expected me to start a restaurant. You know, it's not, um, it, I don't think that was in anybody else's plan, um, but they're, they're just happy for me. What about making money? How hope, soon do you actually hope to make money out of this one and then when you actually expand this? It product? takes time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this business, uh, you just, it's so unpredictable yeah. and it's really every month, every day is a different story. Mm -hmm. Um, have, have you learned to, to deal with that uncertainty though? Yeah, I mean, you have